Well, to speak more on that, we're being now joined by Eugene Michael Jones, the editor of Culture Wars magazine, all the way from Indiana via Skype. Mr. Jones, many thanks for joining us here on Press TV. Now, Obama's speech was much anticipated. Does his policy propose bold new steps as the New York Times portrays it, or was it just same old policies in new words? No, I think his proposal to go back to the 1967 borders is a new initiative that uh, no president has made uh, up till this time. And the only reason he's making it is because events in the Arab, Arab world have outstripped uh, his policies. He was sort of left behind by the whole Arab Spring uprisings, and now he's trying to get in front of the situation by what, making what I think is, is a dramatic proposal. Right, but it's interesting you say that because I'm quoting Obama now. Uh, he says, quote, the borders of Israel and Palestine should be based on the 1967 lines with mutually agreed swaps so that secure and recognized borders are established. Now, these swaps that he talks about, does that somehow endorse settlement construction on Palestinian land, in your opinion? Yeah, it would if if they if they accept that. Yeah, I don't know what they're going to get as a swap in return for that land, but yeah, that would endorse the settlements. But uh, that the the swap alone is a step away from the 2004 statement that George Bush made with the endorsement of Congress, in which he said that those new settlements were already totally under Israel control and would remain under Israel control. So the swap itself is a step forward. Right, but the endorsement does go against uh, the UN mandate, which has declared the settlement construction as illegal. That's true. That's true. So the question is whether the swap is, is going to remain on the table or not. But the situation has changed dramatically. That's the, whole, that's the real news here. In other words, we are now moving toward the declaration of a Palestinian state in the fall, uh, and if these, if the protesters uh, who uh, were there on Nakba Day, if, if a million of them were to march through the Rafa border crossing and declare a state, then he would be totally left out of the of the picture. So I think he's trying to get ahead of it, and the swap is something to placate the Israelis. Uh, but it, 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 so maybe it will happen, maybe it won't happen. But I mean, Israel is now clearly on the defensive, right? which is not the way the situation was at the end of 2010. Right. Now, speaking of the push for Palestinian statehood, and I'm quoting President Obama from his speech again, symbolic actions to isolate Israel at the U.N. in September will not create an independent state, unquote. Now, with stances like that, what does this actually solve for the region? Well, he has to say that to placate the Israel lobby in the United States. But I mean, so, so if they were to cut a deal... Uh, before September, yes, that would eliminate the threat of this this uh, UN uh, movement. But on the other hand, Obama now holds cards that he can play against uh, Benjamin Netanyahu when he shows up uh, tomorrow in Washington and say basically, look, either you do the deal now or we will uh, recognize the Palestinian state in, in September. So he's in a much stronger position. You have to remember that he's, uh, Obama started out by flying to Cairo and trying to create an initiative at the beginning of his administration. The Jews were furious at him when he did that, and they turned on him almost immediately. But what has happened uh, since that time uh, is that uh, the situation has changed. Okay, the situation is no longer what it was. I said on Sunday that uh, you know this the, the Palestinians are now negotiating from some position of strength, and I, I think that is the case. The, the change in Egypt's policy, the opening of the Rafa border crossing, has put the Israelis now on the defense. Also, the, the unity uh, Israeli, uh, the uh, unity Palestinian government. The Israelis couldn't follow suit. C.V. Lippi uh, turned ben Benjamin Netanyahu down when he tried to create a unity government in response. So they are disunited, and the Palestinians are united, and the Arab world is standing behind the Palestinians. So all this type of stuff that he's saying. Obama is saying is trying to get in front of this situation, but uh, at the same time, he's able to play these cards against Benjamin Netanyahu. There's no love lost between these two people. Netanyahu, you remember the Israelis deliberately embarrassed Vice President Biden when he was in Israel by, by announcing new settlements. 
Obama then uh, uh, hit the ceiling and then uh, Netanyahu flew over and Obama said to him, well, if you have something new, uh, let me know. And he walked out of the meeting. Now, I think this is uh, t he understands w uh, what he has to do here. And uh, I think he's willing to to push it against this in a way no president before him has done. Well, speaking of these recent comments, you said that he, Obama had to placate Israeli officials. What's to say that he will take a stronger position in face of Israeli uproar instead of using your word placating them? No, he has to. I didn't say Israeli officials. I said the Israel lobby in America. That's the, that's the, the people that he has to placate. He has he has a position of strength now because he he. Uh, uh, Basically, he murdered Osama bin Laden, and that has given him a position of power in the United States that he did not have before. He was perceived as weak when it came to the Middle East, and now it looks as if he's going to uh, use that in a way that no president before has used that position. So, it, no, I, I, he doesn't have to placate Israeli officials. He's got to placate the Israel lobby in the United States because they determine who gets elected in the United States. And... That's, he's playing off one faction of the American Jews against the other. There is a faction that wants a settlement. There is a faction of hardliners. And up until this point, the hardliners have pretty much determined policy. Now, with the change situation, I think that the, the moderates, the, the Jewish moderates who was, are associated with this administration now have the upper hand and may be able to pull something off. Well, we're going to have to wait and see how that plays out. That was the editor of Culture Wars magazine, Eugene Michael Jones, speaking us, to us from Indiana. Mr. Jones, many thanks for your insight here on Press TV.